ambition, spirit, and grit of this city series always comes to life when the Hawks meet the Explorers. Mirror images using each other as a measuring stick, positioning for a leg up. At LaSalle, the coach is the teacher, and St. Joseph's his one-time student. LaSalle, at time, for precision, still searching for consistency. St. Joseph's magical victories, difficult losses. They'll settle the annual argument for bragging rights. Next. Philadelphia Civic Center along with Ed Stefanski. I'm Larry Rosen. Indeed, a war will be in store tonight. Eddie, of course, coaches do not decide basketball games. Players do. But a night like tonight, with these two coaches, going to see a lot of stuff pulled out of the bag this evening. Well, we got the teacher in Speedy Morris, and probably one of the winningest coaches in Philadelphia history from the Biddy League, CYO, high school, and now college. And he will throw all kinds of zone defense against his pupil, John Griffin, who played for him at Roman Catholic. And John's doing a fine job. The Hawks 9-5, and five, and they need a big out-of-conference win tonight. Could it really be 20 years since John Griffin graduated from Roman Catholic Speedy? Made himself a legend there, the young man back in 1981 when he finally left. These are two guys who go back a long way together. Well, John Griffin was your typical Catholic guard. Could handle the ball, wore the knee pads, every loose ball, fair shooter. And Speedy, he looks calm in that picture, but on the fourth floor at Broad and Vine of Roman Catholic, he used to take the coat off, which we're used to. He threw it out the window, and the manager would have to go down the Vine Street and recover it. It is not a game that these guys look forward to in the context of winners and losers. They love to go against one another. Yeah, I, I hate playing against John Griffin because I, I think so much of him and, and he he meant so much to me as a player. I mean, uh, no one worked harder and, and meant more to, to me. Pound for pound, he's one of the best players ever coached. So you don't like to coach against somebody that you really care about. You know, once the game starts, obviously, uh, you, you want to win. Now, certainly on paper, St. Joseph's would seem to have some matchup advantages, but Speedy's got the bullet in the gun known as Kareem Tal. And Kareem doing an excellent job this year, staying within the flow of the game. He's averaging over 29 points in the last three games. In the 15 games this year, he's the leading scorer in 12 of the games, shooting 57% clip, and he shoots it from downtown. So tonight, he's going to be the man, but he cannot carry the scores to a victory. Other people are going to step up. It's the final City Series game for a couple of young men. We've really come to love over a five-year period. Carlin Worley and Bernard Blunt. They may have had a bit of a mid-season coming out party against Pennsylvania. Well, they came out against Penn and 26 points for Bernard Blunt. He got it going because he slashed to the basket, got the jump shot going, and got other people involved in the offense, and that's the key to Bernard's play. Carl Worley is just a man in the boards, 11 rebounds a game. He's one of the leaders in the Atlantic 10 and in the nation, and it's a big game. He's a Philadelphia kid, and we'd love to have a victory to go out tonight. Both of these clubs have had a little bit of consistency difficulties, and it might be kind of embodied in one person on each side. I'm talking about Romain Haywood for the South, Dimitri Demont for St. Joseph's. Romain Haywood, the junior forward from Atlantic City, has to get on the boards and get some points. The rebounding, the slashing to the baskets, also key. Kareem Towns and Paul Burke can't do it from the outside. Damani is coming on. The last five games, he's found his shooting touch. He is distributing the basketball, and he was key coming into the Hawks season. He's, he's had a little bit of a lull, but maybe he's back. And if the three players of St. Joe are back, it's going to be tough for us out to beat him tonight. Fatigue will clearly be an issue tonight. Both these clubs have played five games in the last week and a half. Mid-season form at the Civic Center. Stay with us. We'll come back with starting lineups and more in just a moment. There's a new kind of energy around here. And it's coming from an energy company that cares about the things you care about. Like helping protect your air and your rivers from pollution. Getting your power back more quickly in an emergency. Using the latest technologies to make sure you have the energy you need. And always looking for more economical ways to do it. It's meant some new thinking and a lot of energy to make sure it all happens. But then there's a new energy company around here. Pico Energy. 
focusing our energies on you. Middle Eastern royalty is kidnapped. War could be declared. Only one agent is available. That would be Gambrel. Tough luck, Middle East. You get Roberto Benigni. to the historic Philadelphia Civic Center, where tonight, LaSalle University and the Philadelphia Big Five present college basketball for your entertainment. This contest is a Philadelphia Big Five game featuring the St. Joseph's University Hawks and the LaSalle University Explorers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet this evening's starting lineups. First, for the visiting Hawks of St. Joseph's University. Starting at a forward position, a 6-foot, 7-inch sophomore from Moscow, Russia, number 55, Dmitry Damani. At the other forward, a 6-foot, 7-inch senior from Philadelphia, number 32, Carlin Worley. At center, a 6'7 inch junior from Saginaw, Michigan, number 42, Reggie Townsend. At guard, a 5'9 inch junior from Trenton, New Jersey, number 10, Mark Babs. And at the other guard, a 6'3 inch senior from Syracuse, New York, number 12, Bernard Blunt. The Hawks are coached by Mr. John Griffin in his fifth season. The assistants, Jeff Arnold, Matt Brady, and oh. Bill Martelli. Now for the LaSalle University Explorers. <laughs> Starting at forward, a 6.6-inch junior from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 21, Romaine Haywood. <laughs> At the other forward, a six foot six inch sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland, number 31, Derek Newton. At center, a six foot ten inch sophomore from Akmar in the Netherlands, number 50, Jasper Van Teesling. At guard, a six foot three inch senior from Philadelphia, number 11, Kareem Town. A six foot one inch senior from Philadelphia, number 23, Paul Burke. The Explorers are coached by Bill Speedy Morris in his ninth season. The assistants, Joe Mahalik, Joe Bryant, and Rich Prendergast. The St. Joseph's Hawks come in at nine and five, led by Reggie Townsend at 15 plus, a 63% shooter, one of the tops in the nation. As they are set back to their opening day starting lineup for the second straight time. They do six different lineups for the LaSalle University Explorers. Nine and six, three and two in conference. And so many of their points come from that devastating backcourt of Towns and Burke. They are the Explorers and Ed Stefanski, Speedy Morris. I think he knows man to man he really can't go against St. Joseph just in terms of the way the matchups look. Well, pretty much every contest LaSalle takes the floor, they, they have problems matching up with the other team. So Speedy has done a good job this year changing up the zone defense. It's a 2-3, a 3-2 look, and a 1-3-1 with Burke running the 
under the basket baseline back and forth, which was very effective against University of Massachusetts. So look for that this evening. And on the Hawks, they can play it all because they have the matchup advantage. So look for the man-to-man -man -man zone. And there's the Hawk. Is that the real Hawk? That's or the, the real Hawk. Okay. Once more, your starting lineups tonight. Worley, Damani, Townsend, Blunt, and Bass. For the Explorers, Newton, Haywood, Van Teasley, Towns, and Burke. These two teams have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe since back in 1909. St. Joseph's leads the series 49-44. to This is an official Big Five City Series game. Our officials this evening, Artie McDonald, Terry Murray, and Sid Rodhopper. Scores getting their feet ready to go, wiping them off any five games in ten days. Well, five and nine for one, five and ten for the other. Sometimes you're in more of a flow that way, but sometimes the fatigue is a fact. Well, the fatigue probably more of a sound because they don't have the, the depth. St. Joe has the better bench, but the kids know each other. Inner city, rivalry game. The emotions will take over. They will play hard for the 40 minutes. As noted in the pregame, Bernard Blunt and Carlin Worley had their best outings Saturday against Pennsylvania. We'll see if they are indeed back in form. John Griffin has said it's the second game of the second half of the season, and we're set for it here on Prism. Haywood and Worley to jump center and remain with the tip to Korean Towns. Explorers in their home life, trimmed to the blue and gold. See, the Hawks are in a straight man-to-man. -man. Bass one counts. Got the height advantage counts. Takes it right to a misses. Tim by Newton. Derek Newton staying hard on the offensive glass because Carl and Warley left him to help out. There's your 1-3-1 one, one zone defense. Burke, the smallest guy in the floor with Sal, on the back running baseline. Look for the Hawks to try to skip past. Put the ball down in the corner and skip a man. There it is. Bass into the corner. That's Worley 17-footer. Carlin extending the range. Good execution by the Hawks that time. Moving to the basketball. Don't see a lot of Carlin Worley going to the corner, so I'm sure Speedy doesn't mind him shooting the basketball from there. How about Blunt on Burke? And that's a, a, an important matchup in the corner. Little Mark Bass at 5'9". Paul Burke likes to back you down sometimes and take a shot off of the 6'3". It's going to be difficult to do that. Especially late on the shot clock. Van Teasley, fadeaway, 12 foot, front of the rim, rolls out, one arm rebound, holding foul call. And <laughs> Dirk Newton. Oh, Jerry Newton. He was just holding them down there. That's a 15 yard penalty. It was John that was Griffin. What Speedy probably told him coming to the game. Just block out Carl Moore. Don't worry about rebound the ball. That's Townsend. He's just holding <laughs> down his arm. He never went for the basket. Okay. Speedy's coached over 800 ball games. Townsend ranges up high. Blunt kicks it. Corner to Monty. That's not counting high, uh, CYO, I'm sure. No. Thousand ball games. High low Townsend left hand. Yep. Reggie Townsend barely misses a 64% shooter from the field. Well, Speedy has to be a little concerned. The first two possessional Hawks, very good shots. Close into the basket, wide open. Double screen for Towns, except Bass right up on him. No help, 16-footer fading, short. Blunt, the power dribble, three on two. He'll slow it down. Townsend kicks it. Damani. Bass left the corner, good hustle by Burke. So everybody gets a touch. Blunt gets a layup. And a Strong move by the driving Blunt. And Bernard Blunt gave up the three-point shot wide open. You should not be able to drive right through a zone like that. No one shows themselves wide open as Burt. Blunt goes coast to coast, but he's playing well. And as we said, 26 points on Saturday night against the Quakers. The all-time leading scorer in St. Joseph's history with 1,800 and now 15 points. Team leader in assist right now, too. Bernard was feeling good before the game. He was giving me a lot of grief. Right? Yeah. He was good. He needs me when he's not playing well. When he's playing well, he forgets my name. I knew he was ready to play. Said, I hate you, Prism guys. <laughs> he meant you, not me. And he was leading the team on the floor saying, let's get busy. He was standing still. Off heel, Burke, penetration, kicks it, Towns for three. 
And Kareem Towns nails it from downtown. Paul Burke with a good penetration. The kickoff pass. In the last three games, have about 36, 26, and 25 points for Kareem Towns, shooting it at a 57% clip. Luck. In a 1-3-1, one, one, you see Van Teesman spending a lot of extra attention on where Reggie Townsend is. Damani for three, long. It comes back strong side to Paul Burke. Burke with his head high. Burke, hop step, over blood, off the glass and go. And Paul Burke stopped on the dime and got it just over Blunt's hand and used the backboard. Tied at seven, club shooting well in the early going. Townsend likes to come out near the elbow where he is right now. The leading scorer, and Antista follows him out. And what he does a good job, he takes away the rotation pass. He gets a lot of steals right here because he's got the quick hands. He's trying to take that rotation pass to St. Joe's away. It's Morley. Shot clock reaches eight. One gives it Morley. Lines up with three, way long. They were at a shot, and look what I found, Paul Burke. And that's a shot Speedy Marks will give Carl and Morley all evening long. Vance Eastlake comes out. Newton through his hands. Not through Townsend's off the iron. And uh, wow, a lot of contact. Bodies flying. And it's still the South Eskimo. The contact between Burke and Worley. You gotta hit him hard if you're gonna put Carlin Worley on the floor. Well, Paul Look Burke's a tough kid, but he's six foot one versus the six seven. Bang! <laughs> No foul, no harm, no call, no, no blood. No foul here as Damani hits. It's Burke for three, back live, no, Townsend the rebound. Harlem bounced up quick, he knows he should have knocked, Paul Burke shouldn't knock him down like that. Will Johnson has checked in for Carlin Worley. They surround Townsend. Good jab step by Haywood to cut off blood. Townsend double team, skip pass, blunt for three. Oh boy, he's got to go. He exaggerates the shot going down. He looks over at Speedy Mars. He's very cocky right now, that Bernard Blunt, but that's how he plays with that kind of emotion. He's a better ball player. And a bump foul called Bernard Blunt. So Bernard, one on one with Paul Burke. As you might expect, a physical matchup, the foul called the first chapters in the book. Good ball game unfolding at the Civic Center. I'm not all that concerned with where a luxury car comes from or who built it. All I want is the best car that I can get my hands on. I found that car. Lease the 275 horsepower Seville with a North Star system right now for $5.99 a month for 36 months and zero down. I've seen what's out there, but there's nothing quite like my Seville. See your Cadillac Super Network dealers. Excellence, service, success. This is St. Joseph's University today. What makes St. Joseph's different? The Jesuit tradition of academic excellence. A history of service to others. An attractive and spacious campus. Successful students. From individual mentoring to team success, discover what much of Philadelphia already has. St. Joseph's University, where people make the difference. Welcome back. Here's good offense against the zone. The skip pass sets up Bernard Blunt's favorite fan, Bernard Blunt. Well, Bernard Blunt has been struggling all year long. 30% field goal percentage, 32 from the three-point line. But he's got it going. Look at the extension. He looks over to the South team, talking to them, and he follows through because he knew it was going all the way down. But excellent rotation of the basketball. The one thing coming in this year, as you see Phil Martelli outside the Hawk line up there, is they needed Blunt to play well. He has not played that well. If he comes on, Carl Worley's rebounding the ball. Damani starts shooting. This is the team people in the area in the Atlantic 10 thought was there. And they beat a great team in Penn, 25th in the nation on Saturday night. Bernard shooting better. Has his first couple of field goals. We had their last three games for St. Joe, if you will. His defense, second half against Drexel. Shutting down Brian Holman, getting that victory. May have kick-started him a little bit because the offense fell into place. The second game against Pennsylvania, now here he is off to a good start. Defense sometimes helps a shooter. Worley back in, Reggie Townsend goes out. 
Haywood and Damani posted. Remain back at him. Faces, fire, scores. And that's what we talked about in the opening. Can they get some in points outside? They can't rely on the outside. And Romain Haywood, the 6'6 junior forward from Atlantic City, knocks it down. Two guys have used the glass. We saw Paul Burke use the glass, and now a good jumper there. 3 2 defense nearly forces a steal as they have switched. Towns is tough at the top of the key. He takes away the pass, got real quick hands. Better in his zone than he is in a man to man defensive situation. So it's Worley high. Okay, a travel by Blood, who Mark Bass said, My far, I didn't make myself available on the penetration. The Hawks have taken good care of the ball. John Griffin's team in the last five games have only averaged 8.4 turnovers a game. Anytime you can keep it under 10, you're doing a good job. Double low snap. He would again post it. Once Damani, fouled by Damani, he'll go to the free throw line. Romain was in early foul difficulties last time out and a loss to Detroit Mercy, and here he is working the post. Again, we saw the opposite side, the left side. Here he's trying to go to the right side, and just Damani just move that hand in, and when you pull it down the hand and go for the shot, the referee's going to call it. Last year, Romain Haywood, all MCC newcomer, he can make the first team this year, but next year there won't be any LaSalle players on the all MCC, correct? Correct. There's Rashid Bay who comes in for Dimitri Damani. So John Griffin has gone to his bench. Haywood misses the free throw. Barry, where are the explorers going? Well, the number one rumor that you hear is the Atlantic 10 but that is the Atlantic 10's choice if they decide to go up to 12 teams as he would make the second. The other two options you hear are the Metro Atlantic where they left a couple of years ago or the Colonial Conference. But they made the move they had to make to get out of the MCC. It's a 2-3. Townsend, penetration, kick it blunt. Bass, good look from there. Rims out. Rebound for Nate Haywood to Paul Burke. One of the biggest problems in the MCC. Well, first the 13-footer by Burke is perfect. And a little bit different there is one is not covering right there with Bay and Bass in the line of the smaller guards, and Paul Burke takes advantage of it with a nice bucket and a LaSalle two-point advantage. The travel in that MCC is just incredible. LaSalle will head out to Indiana again this weekend as Bass lines up. Good rotation, a little long. Good weak side for Haywood ahead. Burke will wait. Now the secondary look is a bad pass of Paul Newitt. Put his hands up on his head. My bad. Bay. Now to St. John Newitt to Townsend. Good catch. Reverses. That's a great catch and a full of pass. Yeah, a tough pass, but a good look by the freshman Rasheed Bay as Griffin calls out the defense, but a better catch by Reggie Townsend, who is averaging 15 points a game, the leading scorer on the Hawks team this year. Now St. Joe's goes zone 3-2. Burke on line, on target. Wow. Paul Burke getting hot. Blunt is off of him now. He recognized it. Seven points on the evening. He leads all scorers eight minutes in. Sound really extending out front of the three. Two. Now. Two, three, or three, three, two. Two. He's he said he's gonna play a defense to see and play them all to see which one works. The one three one wasn't working for him. Simple game. If they play the defense and the Hawks move the ball and get good shots, but they gotta make it. The Hawks have not shot the ball well from the outside. Only 43% on the year. Bass beats the shot clock. He can really get up at 5-9. And he loves to take the ball baseline and shoot the jumper from the corner. There's little guys that like to go baseline. And he can, as you said, explode on the jump shot. Haywood, as Townsend follows him out. High post Newton. Look what I found, and it's Haywood. Line drives it way long. Rebound is controlled by Van Tieslang and a floor foul called on Carly Morley. This Paul Burke is just a terrific guard. The kid, a point guard, a senior from Winco, Pennsylvania, as John's going to take his call off. But he sees as the point guard, Haywood shooting the ball, and it's going to be long. He runs it down and gets another possession, and they'll go to the free throw line. The 97th meeting between St. Joseph's and LaSalle is close as it can be. 
Kelly, cold weather got you down? Here's something to make you warm and fuzzy. The Fan Magazine is running a special Valentine's Day gift offer that can't be beat. So forget the flowers and candy and call 1-800-THE-FAN-1 now. For just $13.95, you can give the one you love a subscription to The Fan, the magazine that no Philadelphia sports fan should be without. And order two or more subscriptions and we'll include a pair of our famous boxer shorts absolutely free. Don't miss out on this great offer. To order by credit card, call 1-800-THE-FAN-1. The Supreme Court of the United States, our ultimate symbol of law and order. But in a single night, two of its justices will be brutally assassinated. A thousand miles away in New Orleans, a lone law student has pieced together who did the killings. Julia Roberts, Denzel Washington, The Pelican Brief. Speedy Morris, who has known John Griffin since his pre-teen days. Griff has always had the telltale eyes of the street fighter. Last year, a fitting crescendo ending with a judgment call. a two-point ball game. Griff leads the series 3-1. John Bonder, the official with that gutsy call, and here we are, a year and a week later, and they're still talking about it. Well, the South notes has a controversial goaltending. St. Joe just has goaltending. <laughs> <laughs> I guess St. Joe won the game. Speedy still has the jacket on. No fourth floor window tonight. Blunt gets a seat as Will Johnson comes back in. The Explorers have yet to substitute. They've yet to commit a foul. No, they have two team fouls. Newton to trigger. Double screen Towns accepts. With a fresh clock. Burke and Bay. Paul might think about backing down the freshman Bay. Line post Van Tiesler. They're trying to bury the guards inside and get him coming off screens here. Newton, 13 feet away. Very good as improved as an offensive performer. Well, so far, early in the contest with a little over 11 minutes, they've gotten some inside play. Romain Hayward with three points. Derek Newton with four. So seven of the 17 points have come not from the guard position. Here's a 2-1-2 or a 2-3, depending on where Van Tiesling sets himself up high. Don't we'll have to worry about Townsend with that medium-range jumper. It's a straight 2-3 zone by those South scores. And Haywood shows himself high. Damani needs help. Shot clock's already at 7. Bay. Hop step one, Bird. Jumper. Rasheed Bay. That's not Rasheed's game, but a good breakdown move. Again, another little guy who can jump right there. The power dribble goes straight up. Hawks down one. His minutes have continued to grow. They're real high on Rasheed Bay at Hawk Hill. Well, they should be. Bird this time looks like he wants to take Bay. Kicks it. Haywood. And Teasley posted with Worley. Bird doesn't even look at the basket. And Devontae a strong rebound. Bird never got set. Pushing it. Far side, Bay. Dumani. The hands are down on defense for the Explorers. Swing it, Dumani. Mark Bass takes a peek at the shot clock, which is now at seven, as you see. And Dimitri, a great shot from the air around the out. Cole Burke, side court right. Towns explodes on best. Lay it off for Van Tiesland. Great penetration in the dish off with the left hand. The catch by Van Tiesling. We saw that Saturday night by Jerome Allen so many times. And tonight, Kareem Towns, the good, quick movement of the basketball. And Will Johnson got caught looking at the ball just a little bit. What you can do with Towns. Four minutes back. 
Cross court steal by Towns. There's those hands of Green Towns. Four on one. The Dipsy do the Haywood. Offensive and Hall of Hall travel before on the main Haywood. As well as Green Downs did on the last possession. It was a poor move on his part to leave his feet and give up the ball a little too early. There's the good hands by Green Towns. We talked about the steals. Right here, he has to stop at the foul line too early to give it up to the big guy. It gave Damani the chance to get over and draw the offensive foul or get the walk. He has to hold the dribble a little bit longer, take the jump shot at the foul line, or wait till the big guy gets underneath the basket. A rare four-on-one yields nothing. Back one, three, one. No. Hold off Landgren's in. It's a three-two. Worley. Oh my, what a muscle move as Carlin hits the ground. He threw that in from his knee. <laughs> the ball going low. He'll take it any way he can get it. Four points in the evening for the big guy, Carlin Worley. Landgren off the bench around and out. Worley again takes a seat as John Griffin wants it over the back. Townsend is fouled, no shot. It'll just be on Olaf Landgren, the freshman. Hawks trying to run on the defensive rebound. Rashid Bay just powers it all by himself. The freshman from St. John Newman in South Philadelphia. The good pass into Reggie Townsend inside. Langren with a good foul because Reggie was going to get the layup. He's giving him an elbow with a face down there, says Speedy. Three team fouls on the Sal. Double team Townsend finds nobody. Steal. Recovered by Worley. Bay, 16 feet away, Rashid Bay, and Speedy is all over the official that Carlin pushed off to get the basketball. St. Joe back on top. Towns, three-point shot. Rebounding foul called as Bernard Bluntown has got a couple of words for Olaf Landgren. I'll tell you what, the Hawks got real lucky on that transition basketball. They lost sight of Kareem Towns, a wide open three, and that's what John Griffin said to him. Hey, we have to match up, especially with Towns and Burke from the outside. He's also telling Blunt to calm down and just play the game right now. He doesn't want Blunt to get thrown out of the game. Terrell Myers comes in. There he is with the basketball. It's Worley ranging to the corner. Entry pass, Townsend. Townsend layup. No. Another rebound, Paul Burke. Good set offense. Four boards for Burke. Everything but the shot. And back man to man. Now Blunt has Towns on the near side. Been waiting for that one. New dribble drive. 12 footer out of control. But we'll get to the free throw line as he jumped into Townsend. It's as aggressive as we've seen Derek on the offensive end. But what happens is with Reggie Townsend not moving his feet, he has a real bad angle here. He's trying to get in front of him, but Newton goes up and leans into Reggie Townsend, creates the contact, and goes to the line for two. Newton just a 55 percenter from the free throw line, as you see. We are tied at 20. takes a lead at the 7.30 mark. Speedy reminds the officials, watch for the push-off. That's not quite right. It's 21-20. Back in a moment. Wait till you see what I got for you. So far, I'm not very impressed. Dennis Quaid. Yeah! Joking a diamond. You have a really sexy voice. In a comedy about a family who can escape anything. Accept their job. No, no, no. <laughs> Next time, by American. Undercover Blues. The drama. What are you going to do, Frank? You stay away from my get out of The suspense. <laughs> the comedy. Eat my shorts. The action. The stars. The movies, the channel, surprise, with movies like this, shouldn't you be watching Prism?
All right, here's the game in a nutshell on this end of the floor as uh, LaSalle's been zoning up and there are the jump shooters. Well, there's your 2-3, two, two guys out front. Paul Burke jumping out on Rasheed Bay. They're trying to match up in a man-to-man. The clock going down, but Rasheed Bay knows he has to go one-on-one. Burke is respecting the quickness of Rasheed Bay. Gives up the jump shot, and he nails it. Two teams shooting very well, right around 50% in the early going. The strategy sessions continue. The sound with that limited bench doesn't have as many options. The battles of the band play on. Actually now, the Hawks are at 9 of 15, or 60%. Said both teams are playing well. They're taking good care of the basketball. They each have three turnovers. They're getting good looks at the basket. This is a good college game so far with handling of the ball. Well, you see, something has to happen, though, here, because St. Joe is playing real good man-to-man -man defense, and they got the ball inside of the for South. Speedy has to be happy that Newton and Haywood are giving them some points. The last time we looked at it, it was seven points. Now they got nine points of the 21 coming from inside. Now, excuse me, 11. That's they right. have these things on the board. That's good balance for LaSalle scoring the basketball. Everett Catlin checks in, wearing number 55 for LaSalle. He'll play the middle. Trying to front on Townsend. Warley trying to get lost along the baseline. Steps out to the corner to take the basketball. Catlin follows him. Good communication among the backline defenders for LaSalle. Bates going to have to break him down again? No. Oh, nice. Harlan Williams is the best big man passers we've seen. Well, what they did is they threw the ball perimeter-wise. Harlan Worley flashed inside. Once you get the ball inside, the zone has problems. A good two-man game to bounce past the tail. There's Blunt and Towns. Newton. Burke on the baseline. Fade away 14 points. Top shot. Paul Burke. Paul Burke. I mean, you can't play much better defense than Rasheed Bay. He has a fade away jumper to the corner. Nine points on the evening with a Chestnut Hill Academy graduate. Terrell Myers stands still. Jump shot is good. As he climbed and spun. Knew he was shooting, but he got the ball. These teams don't shoot the ball that well normally, but they are fi on fire so far. One point ball game, as you see. Towns with luck. Towns spinning. Layup. No. Rebound happening. He draws so much coverage, does Kareem. Again, Kareem went all the way in. You have to respect the drive. You have to help out. That hurts your rebounding assignment. Newton strong to the basket. Newton had a very good game, eight points. Absolutely. He's denying Townsend on the other end. Myers. He knew that one. He was back coming with a close grip court before the ball went through the net. He's got five. Well, Terrell Myers comes in the game at 48.8% from the three-point range. That's number one in the United of ten and one of the best in the nation. He is fighting for minutes, is Terrell. St. Joseph's man-to-man. -man. Morley comes all the way out. Burke with Ben for three. Paul Perkins got a better these shots are going down, they're coming straight down. I know the convention center, the ceiling's high, but this is going straight down. Nothing, not even net. 28-27, Burke is 5 for 7 for the field with 12 points. One, knocked out of his hands, saved by Newton, great hands, Paul Burke. The wide eyes of Paul Burke, the stutter step. Kick, Towns, penetration, fade away. Fouled by Rasheed Bay, called and pushed on Rasheed. And Kareem Towns, the 82 percenter, will go to the free throw line. Bad foul there, but the freshman against the senior Kareem Towns. Arguably the best player in the MCC. Tough assignment right there. One-on-one, -on -one and you don't have any help. Remain Haywood in, Dimitri Devani in, Bernard Glug out. Olaf Landgren out. Have yet to see Mike Gizzi in the first half. Speedy almost always gives Kareem and Paul Burke about two minutes apiece off in the half and lets Gizzi play a little bit of backcourt. Not tonight. Well, Kareem comes into the game averaging 26, 25 points a game. 
The new stats having come out for the national stats, he was 16th in the nation. He'll probably move up a couple Ooh. spots. Yeah, he was 16th when he was at 23-6. Well over 1,600 points in his career. Whirling into the rebound. Myers on the gallop. Mark Bass has come back in. There's Townsend, has that shot of his, knocked from behind by Towns. Recovered by Newton. Rich is surprised to be that open. Well, as he's got to bang it down. That's his shot, that 14-footer right inside the foul lane. He doesn't miss that very often. He's got to shoot the basketball. Forget the pass when you're open. Oh, it's Burke. Haywood takes the baseline route. That looked like it went right off his foot. It did. On first down, Jordan Haywood. So the troops will gather once more. It's been that kind of a ball game. Nip and tuck throughout half number one. Meteor man in foul. Special appearances by Luther Vandross, Sinbad, Naughty by Nature, Cypress Hill, and Big Daddy Kane. Stay chilly, peace them out. Chilly, Robert Townsend is. Have a good night, folks. Meteor Man. Anyway, we always talk about Kareem the score, but Kareem the passer has been very impressive in 1995. Kareem Towns, as we said, has let the game come to him. If he's open to shoot the basketball, but when he drives and people pick him up, he's unselfish. He tries to get the ball to his teammates. Came into the game with 34 assists. That was his 35th. And we'll see him coming up at halftime. The Towns, up Towns. Kareem averaged over 41 a game as a senior at Southern High. It didn't come that easily for the natural. When they got to LaSalle, we'll share his story with you and a lot more coming up at halftime. LaSalle doing a great job on the rebounding. Coming in, the Hawks, one of the best in the nation in rebounding margin against opponents. But look at this rebound. Seven rebounds for the Hawks versus 17. That's five offensive rebounds for the Explorers, 12 off the defensive glass. A lot of teams don't do that to the Hawks, and so no. far in the first half, that's the reason LaSalle has a two-point advantage. St. Joe hasn't missed that many shots. They've only missed seven shots on 63% field goal percentage, 12 for 19, but they've yet to get an offensive rebound. LaSalle goes back to the 1-3-1 with Burton on the back line, Towns out front. And the Hawks read it and recognize it. They've got Townsend high, Worley low. Damani, dribble drive, penetration, Townsend defense. Good patience. Townsend crosses Damani. Shot clock's at five. Townsend's got to go. Just beats the clock, and it scrapes the bottom of the rim. He played much better defense end. They matched up well in that 2-3 zone. Haywood for three. Uh-uh. Newton to keep it alive, and that will go the other way. Off to our group. Joe Mahalik, Speedy's assistant, looking on. The Explorers lost Saturday evening in this building to Detroit Mercy by two. In the second half, Detroit Mercy shot 70%, counted 70% against Speedy's zone. Speedy said they shot well, but our zone didn't play very well. Townsend goes through and sets a double low post. Cross court skip is there for the body. Dribble drive, jump stop, hesitation. Nothing but class, but a lot of the free throw line for Dimitri Damani. What a year it's been in the life of Dimitri Damani. You're going to do a movie. You pick this year for Damani to do it. Well, some people have said he's played too much basketball, played all summer long for the Russian team, did a great job. Right there, he penetrates against the 2 3 zone. 
any zone defense, you must have some penetration in the seams to make two players cover you. Damani did a good job. Is he tired or is he coming out of it now? He's played five good ball games in a row. Makes the free throw. Our first look tonight at number 15, Nemanja Petrovic from Yugoslavia to Lansdale to Maryland to St. Joe. You know, he's not playing well. People say, well, he's averaging 10 points, six rebounds, and three assists. A lot of college coaches would like to have those numbers. As you see Petrovic checking in, the transfer from Maryland. Now caught on Carlin Worley on the rebound over the back of Derek Newton, his second personal. So he has to sit down at the 234 mark. And here are the Hawks man to man. Towns running point. They flatten out a 1 4 set. Towns wants a back down Bass. And a foot foul called on Mark Bass. Bass is saying there's a referee about four feet away to my left. Why are you making the call? One and one should be coming up now. Well, John Griffin is staying in this man to man all evening long. Probably should throw a different look once in a while because Speedy has some real good sets against man to man, especially for the guards. And as you said, a 1 4, they're taking those four guys low on the baseline, and now they got Towns one on one. And it's a mismatch right now, height wise. Towns on Mark Bass. Got it. John Griffin's club needs another strong out of conference win. That's what's at stake for them here tonight, coming off a win over the 25th ranked Quakers. They are all in conference the rest of the way. The Towns hits it. So it's a three point ball game, which is a big lead in this first half. It's been one or two points throughout. 1 3 1 go the Explorers. We set the defense for you. See Burke on the baseline, trying to mirror the basketball. High, Townsend, kick it to Monty, swing it, Bass, long three, Bass, short. Rebound Petrovic, and he is fouled by Burke, and Nemanja makes his first contribution. And that's part of the problem when you have Burke on the back line trying to rebound the basketball against the bigger Petrovic. Petrovic did not get off the bench against Pennsylvania, and only got five minutes against DePaul. Put it on the floor, got it to Townsend. Townsend, good up fake, gets the uh, little two-footer. The good patient by Reggie Townsend, not to force the shot, give Bet Petrovic a little bit of credit. He handled the basketball, made the good pass. St. Joe needs some good minutes out of the big guy. Burke wants it. No roll, and it's uh, Newton a little missed time because it took the extra hop on the rim. Rebound Townsend. He's got a layup. Again, Green Towns at the point of that 1 3 1 is so quick with the hands, he'll make you look bad right there. You must take good care of the basketball and be strong with the ball. Now they go 3 2 to the Explorers. Changing almost every trip down the floor. Petrovic travels on the baseline. And Bernard Blunt will come in for the final 61 ticks. He'll get to Monty. Speedy's got to be pleased with the way the defense has gone, although the Hawks have shot very well. Turnovers low on both sides. Explorers just three. Hawks just five. A flattened out one four and out for Paul Burke, who calls thumb up. Shot clock is at 13. Give it up, Van Tiesling. And a reach in foul will be called on Mark Banks. He tried to help out. Speedy Mars knows he's got only a couple of definite known commodity weapons, mostly in the backcourt, that will force his defense, force the offense, to adjust to him. Morley in, Petrovic out. Yes, now with two fouls, Jasper Van Tiesling for the free throw line. Van Tiesling has started every game of his year and a half career out of Alkmaar in the Netherlands. Got it. 
Rashid Bay comes back in. Bernard Blunt goes out. Blunt with six first half points. And Tisla gives LaSalle a five point lead. The shot clock has been turned off. The defense has been turned up. Traffic cross court to Myers. And Bay on their midcourt will hold it against the 3 2. See how far Towns extends out. We'll have Speedy Morris in conversation with Alonis Stefanski in just a couple of moments as the half expires. Myers, four, has to force a three off the heel. Towns can't win it with it. So the biggest lead of the first half comes right at halftime. 35 30. The Sound on top of the Hawks of St. Joseph's. Good shooting on both ends. Good distribution of the points on the St. Joseph side. Paul Burke, though, leading all scorers with 14 and an eight point contribution out of Derek Newt. So a good first half for Derek. The LaSalle Explorers, a 35 to 30 lead on the Hawks of St. Joseph's. Ed Stefanski in conversation now with William Speedy Morris. Speedy, you did a great job in the first half. They only had one offensive rebound, I believe. Well, that, no, certainly when he played out, one of the top rebound teams in the country. And we appealed in our pride, Eddie. You know, uh, if, if we could just contain them on the boards, we have a shot of winning a basketball game. Now, I'm proud of the effort in the first half, but we got to back and do it the second half. I didn't realize you knew all those defenses you threw out there. I didn't realize. I thought you played you one defense. forget about those Bonner days when you got all the credit, Eddie, and I, I did everything. Uh, you, you don't tell people about that. What are you going to do in the second half? Same thing? Well, no, hopefully we'll, we'll do I mean, they're going to come out and probably uh, change a few things. I, I look for full court pressure. And if we can handle it, we should get some easy uh, opportunities. I think our guards are playing really well. And uh, we have to, they're, they're the key. Full on cream plays uh, with their head and uh, under control, then uh, it's going to be a good second half. Well, listen, good luck. And I always like to see my assistants do well. Let's go back to Larry Rosen. All right, and Stefanski Speedy Morris, a future as a color commentator, had that nail. We'll come back with our halftime. lead right at the half. It's 35 to 30. Philadelphia and Kareem Towns opted to stay home and follow the long line of public league stars to LaSalle University. Forced to sit out academically in his first year, he did not come along as quickly as he would have thought. But in this, his final go-round, Kareem Towns is giving it everything he's got. Even the most casual observer can see it, even on the practice floor. The finesse, everything smooth and clean. The stride, long and even. The grace of a pure athlete. And the comfort level of the natural at home on the floor. He is LaSalle senior guard Kareem Towns. His teammates call him Rap. We'll simply call him the most prolific scorer in the Big Five. This is Towns Vintage 1995, a game the NBA scouts are starting to notice once more. Yet success has not come easily. Towns scored over 41 points a game as a senior at South Philadelphia High School. He sat out his freshman season, and when he did come back, his game just didn't quite have the flow he was used to. I was shooting too many threes, and I was worried about, I guess, individual things which you know shouldn't have never been never, never came about i mean we wasn't winning and you know and that was frustrating as well but i mean now i think i'm 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 i'm, I'm always been confident it's just you know now things are just really falling the place the way i want them to fall in place i mean i'm taking the shots i'm taking what the defense is giving me and my team you know they've been you know supportive as well as the coach ah uh, the coach an old world master named william speedy marks his game, his fame, has been predicated on controlled offense, intelligent play. Blending in, quote, unnatural, has not always been easy. I think he grew up, you know, I, I'm sure that I'm not the only one that told him that he has uh, terrific ability. Uh, 
um, on school and on many occasions. Uh, many times after getting 30 points, that he could be even better, a lot better. Uh, but he's playing a total game now. He's he's a defensive presence. I mean, he's one of the top the steals in the league. And, uh, he's got great hands. When he wants to play defense, he makes our our zones from the perimeter very, very good. He and Paul Burke have the ability to, to cause some havoc. Senior Paul Burke has been Cal's point guard for each of his three seasons. But more, he's been his roommate, his confessor, his cheerleader, and conscience. Most of all, his friend. I'm a point guard. I have to make sure everyone else is involved. I mean, occasionally I have to make sure I get the scoring done just because we need it. But my primary job is to get Kareem the ball. I mean, he's our scorer. And I think he understands that. I mean, I think it took him last year, all of last year, to understand that. And I think he knows that I'm going to get him the ball when he's open. And he's not worried about making sure he comes to the ball. Things like that. He knows I'll get it to him when he's open. And I think uh, we work together really well. And I think he keeps it up. He's a great chef going pro. Going pro, the dream of every schoolboy, especially the natural, like Kareem Kennedy. I know I can play in the NBA. It's, I mean, I talk about that a lot with a lot of my friends, too. I mean, a lot of people used to say I was thin and all that, but, I mean, I've been playing thin all my life. I mean, I can put on weight. I mean, it don't matter. I mean, I feel as though my talent good enough to play at the next level. It's just going to take a lot more, you know, hard work and dedication. And, you know, I have no problem giving that up. It has been a short, dynamic college career for Kareem Towns. He opted to stay home stay in touch, allow those he loves to see the process unfold, the game and the man who plays it, grace, finesse, explosive quickness, and still that ready smile. Yeah, I'm still around. Mine's another thing. Uh, I mean, I, I like to say is I matured, and I mean, I just had a lot of good people around me just to lead me in the right direction, you know, and not had me on the streets like, you know, some people, but I mean, the people who, who, who always surrounded themselves by me or been around me has helped me a lot. And I, there's a lot of people I like to thank, but you know, I just can't go through the names and there's so many, but you know, coming from South Philadelphia, I mean, it was a hard struggle when I first started playing basketball, but you know, my mother and my family and all my friends down South Philly, you know, kept faith in me. And, you know, they just, you know, told me to, to keep my head on the street. I could do it, you know. I'm doing it. of the guts and the heart of Paul Berg. The little point guard's got 14 first half points and he's done it on the penetration, he's done it on the pull up, he's done it in the open floor. Paul Berg, the storyline here in the first half. And we'll come back, look at first half stats and much more with Ed Stefanski in just a moment, live from the Philadelphia Civic Center. in half number two, back at courtside with Ed Stefanski, I'm Larry Rosen. Speedy Morris, a very honest guy with you at halftime. He's trying to make this a battle of the backcourts. And he's doing a good job because St. Joe, on the offensive end against his zone, is taking that 35-second clock, running it down, which is problems for St. Joe. They have to get LaSalle going up and down a little bit more. All right, we'll take a, a look at the key moments from uh, half number one, where St. Joe's got off early, courtesy of their leading scorer, Reggie Townsend. Townsend doing a good job in the baseline, shoots the ball well at a 63% clip, and why not that close to the hole? Uh, Bernard Blunt had a couple of good opportunities early, but only got two field goal attempts. This was one of them. 
But the good skip pass in the zone, he's set to shoot the basketball and goes up with the strong legs. Three points relatively evenly distributed for St. Joseph's, led by Townsend with eight, Blunt with six. Morley Bay have four, Myers with five off the bench. On the other end, the teamwork, the unsung hero on this would be the pass from Romaine Haywood, first the strip by Towns, but the good hands by Towns, and then Haywood to keep his head up to see Burke streaking at the basket for the two. Ball on the board with 14 points. Derek Newton has been letter perfect. Three for three for the field, two for two for the line. Great work on the offensive glass. And that's what's kept also against the Hawks of Kent LaSalle in there. They're doing a good job on the board, and the front court people are scoring the basketball. 15 points from the front court LaSalle scores. And you see 20 out of the back board. There's not been that much on the bench, though. They've got no bench scoring thus far for the LaSalle Explorers. Team statistics, good shooting on both ends. And Eddie, you notice the rebound advantage goes to sound. If we can break that down to the rebounds on each side, St. Joseph's just one offensive rebound. And they one of the top teams in the nation in rebounding margin. And tonight, Speedy Morris has said to his kids, he's asked them, hey guys, you gotta go up, bang, put everything you got because we need to beat the Hawks this evening. And you know that when you're playing against a zone team as LaSalle is, oftentimes the matchups are not good on the rebounding side. So they're shifting and using their feet real well. But they're, again, they're taking a long time to shoot the basketball are the Hawks. And Speedy's defense, he's changing them all up, going 2-3, 3-2, 1-3-1. We may even see another one from that man. And Speedy says he he expects to see some man-to-man -man pressure in half number two. What do you think? Yeah, I think some man-to-man -man pressure and some maybe some zone and trap out of the zone, the, the, the St. Joe Hawks, a little bit more uh, zones because right now he's played all man-to-man -man as John Griffin in the first half. Speedy has had a look at it. LaSalle's done a good job handling the basketball. Only three LaSalle turnovers. They averaged 13 a ball game. They've only had three. That's due to that good pressure by the Hawks. John Griffin has distributed his minutes very well. He's used nine players. Newton, Towns, and Burke have played 20 minutes. Here's John Griffin. That's a great job by John Griffin. Precisely what you had touched a lot about the hot ball movement against the zone. Well, they know Speedy's going to play a zone. That's one good thing if you go into halftime. You know what you want to diagram. And they need, as John said, skip passes. That means not pass to the guy next to you. Go past him to the next guy, skip over him, and hopefully they can get good angles and shots at the basket. It's the 1-3-1 one, one from LaSalle. run running away with half number two. Blunt Bay, Townsend to the high post, Woolley the low post, Bass trying to run some baseline. But look at the clock, they keep running this 35 second clock, it's under 20 now. St. Joe's having problems getting good looks at the basket quickly. Blunt, dribble, shot clock at 10. Andrew pass Townsend, the pass to Worley, give it off for Bay. Two point shot, no point shot. And they used 33 seconds. And Blunt and Bass, your outside shooters, didn't shoot the basketball. They took away the known. The unknown, the freshman, had the shot. Man-to-man -man defense. Cut by Newton. Power move, Newton. Can't get a roll. Tip by Van Tiesley. Jasper now with six points. It's a seven-point lead. That's a big one in this ball game. And St. And Joe get a little bit, out. yeah, a little bit of their own medicine on the offensive glass. He's not happy. Wow, just 61 ticks into half number two. It's John Griffin, an unusual timeout.
Marcus Lee going to come to baseline too. Come on, now. Now, you're not going with a shot here. You're anticipating a shot. You should be on the glass like Paul Brett. You got it? That's a fascinating timeout. And again, St. Josie's a preponderance of man-to-man -man in the Atlantic 10, and John Griffin wants a good zone offense. Well, John Griffin wants the guy behind the defense so they don't see him, and then he can duck the middle, and they have to worry about him, open things up. But I like that the end, he said, like Paul Burke, he respects Paul Burke's play. He wants Bernard to get on the board like Paul Burke does. Challenging the senior, Bass from the corner. And he's drilled by Bantista, no whistle, but a big three to break a run that extended back into the first half. And if you're going to use a timeout that quickly, you'd like to get something out of it. And they did right away. The Hawks down four. Now a double high stack. Posted Towns knocked away. Oh, a little smack between Kareem Towns and Mark Bass. And the referee using his voice, not his whistle. Temper, just uh, keep your hands off my face. Burke, cross court skit into the bench. And Speedy's not gonna like that. That's only four turnovers, but not a good pass. Well, Burke certainly anticipated Towns cutting left, and Towns did not. Again, Towns and Hobb. Worley Love. Towns and ducks down, then comes back to the middle and accepts the basketball. Kick it to Bass. Blood. Bay's got a look, takes it for Worley, passing up the shot. Blood. 16 footer, foul by Kareem Town. So that was a one on one move, not the set offense. Well, it wasn't a set offense, but what Bernard did well, again, got in the seam. When you're in a 1 3 1, there's one guy out front for LaSalle. That's an odd front. You must go even with two of your players attacking it. Make that one guy make a decision, and then you can swing the ball. But Green Towns does a nice job funneling you and then taking away that swing pass. Long hits it. On Kareem Towns, that is his first personal foul. I like to see the Hawks play some kind of half-court trap or just show them something different to straight man-to-man -man all evening, but they're just going back in the straight man-to-man. -man. And the matchups have Bass with Towns and Bay with Burke. Three guards set. Van Tiesle, a little bit far out, trying to back down Worley. Uses the offhand, and Carlin claps. That's not what LaSalle likes on their half-court set. They're not looking for Van Diesel one-on-one -on -one to take this long, as he definitely hooks him with his left arm. Carl Worley doing a good job keeping his feet on the ground. Again, LaSalle, 1-3-1. Duck it in. Worley, layup. That's the way he drew it up. And look at the matchup. Carl Worley at 6-7. Let's give him 240 in the weight against Burke at 6-1. Maybe 190, 180. Probably not that. Quick 7th one run after the timeout. Burt, penetration and hits it. He has hit so many big shots, one stop and shots like that. 16 points on the evening for Paul Burt, averages 15 a game. Leaves all scorers. Again, Townsend steps. One for three. Rims out. Floorboard, Townsend. Yeah, Reggie Townsend. And one of the few offensive rebounds for the Hawks is put back by Reggie Towns in 10 points as John Griffin calls the defense. And I think they finally went to a little bit of zone. So now it's a good look. See what LaSalle does with it. And at least you can rest your guys a little bit too. One on one move by Burke. All fired and blood emerges. Tells Bass to come all the way through the baseline and he does. There's Mark in the corner, takes the ball. High low through the hands, tough pass by the But that was a good look again, a high low. I would go back to it again. I, if I was John Griffin, I'd stay in that zone. I'd show the sound a little bit different. The man to man, it's 39 39, show them something different, and they, they are in a like, 1 2 2. Turnovers, still very low on the evening. Double low stack. Burke comes to Haywood's side and throws it out of bounds and hit off Bernard Blood. 
They have not confused Speedy Morris and LaSalle, but it's a look they have not seen all night. So they're having problems executing their zone offense right now. Now it's man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds. And Burke gets a screen and misses a three. Rebound to Bass, standing flat-footed, will leave the break. Bass in the air to Worley. Off his chest to Townsend, and he's fouled. That was a pass. Carlicott just hit it with his chest. Real lucky. As Speedy wants a walk, but I mean, John Griffin and the Hawks are lucky because Bass leaves his feet. You can't do that. That was a walk first. Speedy had it right, but look at the pass to Carl Moore who's double team, and the big guy was about five feet from the basket. What's he going to do with it? Not a good decision by Mark Bass, but it's going to work out because Reggie Townsend will go to the line. Townsend continues to be among the leaders in the nation in field goal percentage. Got the first. The teams have just not really respected his offensive ability. And he's been getting open jumpers from the foul line all year long. Well, the South certainly went to school. He has not had that shot tonight. But has a dozen substitutions. Will Johnson in, Reggie Townsend out. Johnson more of a defensive presence. Hawks show two possessions, the last two possessions zone. Now they go back to the half court, man to man. And he's back in the zone. He goes 10. He was going to go man to man. Now he's back in the zone defense. Bass running the point. Tags it. Takes it to Worley. Uses his body well. Give some space. He's got 10 points. And the zone for St. Joe was so flat. The middle was wide open right there. High at 41. Good ball game. LaSalle changes up. They go 3-2. Burke and Towns now out front. Bass over. Newton is fouled. That'll be three free throws coming for Mark Bass as Derek knew a little late. Commits foul number three. And Speedy's telling Derek Newton. Derek Newton says, my fault. You have to be under control when you're flying at the shooter. The three-point line. Once the guy's up in the air, you don't have an angle. You're not going to block the shot. You do not want to foul the jump shooter. Bass is 76 percent of this year, down a little bit from his career number. Has the first. We will see, I believe, Mike Gizzy, the freshman from Chestnut Hill Academy, for the first time, as he is heading for the scorer's table for the staff. This looked like he fired that three-pointer in, and you know where he is at all times. And all week long, I'm sure at practice speed, he said, Bass, when he shoots a three, you got to get a hand up in there. A little too aggressive by Derek Newton. Derek Newton is going to have a seat on the bench. With three fouls. So they go a little smaller here now with Gizzy. Haywood shifts to the four spot, if you will, and Gizzy will range the perimeter. The problem, too, is Newton's giving a good game inside with ten points. Three-point lead for the Hawks. They were down seven. Not long ago, zone 3-2. That timeout by John Griffin, 61 seconds into the second half. Had the Hawks coming, their offense a little bit better. He's changed up the man-to-man, -man, going to zone defense. And LaSalle not getting good shots, but that's not a bad one. That's 23 feet, and over the back goes Van Tiesel. Speedy not happy at all with the call. Van Tiesel going over the top. But we saw Towns shoot it from that. But that is Kareem Towns' shot. That's not a bad shot, believe it or not. It was deep. Mantisa with three fouls. Warren kicks it. Johnson swing it. Bang. 14 footer. Rashid. Rashid Banks showing some offense. Larry, you're right. Six points for the evening, but a quick off the dribble jump shot. Three for four. And timeout Speedy Morris. So it has been all St. Joseph's. A 16 to 4 run since John Griffin's timeout. We'll see what Speedy's got. Back in a moment. There's a new kind of energy around here. A company that can meet your energy needs well into the next century without building even one new plant. Which means no large increase in the cost of your service. A company whose oil fired generators will also run on natural gas. Another way to help keep your bill down. There's a new energy company around here. Pico Energy, focusing our energies on you. There's no place he won't go. Captain's log. Sorry, 23.9. Ace, get out of the tank. I just got good, Captain. I didn't have the power. Nothing he won't do. And no one he can't handle. Do not go in there. Ace Ventura, pet detective. Yes, yes. 
Stefanski. The last five minutes have been all St. Joseph's, their best basketball of the night. Here's part of the run. Well, they're executing well on the offensive end. A high-low set to get into Ranging Towns. He's an excellent shooter. You have to get out in front of him. And he's also can pass the ball and a mismatch inside physically. Worley on Burke. Well, on any given night, St. Joseph's beats Villanova when they're ranked 22nd, beats Pennsylvania when they're ranked 25th, but they lose to Monmouth in the consolation game of the Cowboys shootout in Wyoming just after Christmas, and they lost at the buzzer at West Virginia. So they've been searching for that level of play that they've had the last five minutes or so. And that is immediately following John Griffin's timeout at the 1859 mark. Now Speedy takes one early and see what he comes out with. For that graphic about a low, it is a low that they possibly could have won at West Virginia, but yeah. a lot of teams don't win at West Virginia. The Monmouth loss was the bad loss. Precisely. Posted Haywood takes it to Johnson. Blocked by Johnson. Haywood gets it back. Backs away from Johnson. Burke backs in bed. Travel Paul Burke with his I'll well, give credit to Griffin. He changed up, went zone defense, gave a different look, went back in the man to man. LaSalle offensively a little bit out of sync right now. And Speedy calls Romain Haywood's number out of the timeout and gets it sent back by Will Johnson. 3 2 zone. Gives a corner shot. Entry pass. Warley. Up fake. Yep. It's amazing. They couldn't get any good looks at the basket. Now they're moving the ball around crisply, getting good shots at the hole. Quick shot by Towns. Long. Haywood keeps it alive. And it's Isling and Johnson. It's off Johnson. Towns has missed his last five shots. He is one for eight. Burke. The first clock, Towns, Kareem. Can't keep a good man down as he gets nine points on the evening, his first bucket in the second half. And believe me, he can light it up and get him back in the game real quickly. And now four. The world of entry pass Johnson faces, fires, rims, gives him the rebound. No Hawks even near the offensive glass. All standing around looking. Haywood would take it from the outside. Line drives it short. Good hands by Bass. Good recovery by Bass on the ground. Held ball belongs to LaSalle University. Speedy wanted to walk. Yeah, he wanted to walk because Bass was in the ground. And it's always a tough call. Did he move, establish a pivot foot? Townsend in, Johnson out. Here's the hustle of Mark Bass. Also, they're lucky that Bass didn't get it up because they had the break the other way. No LaSalle explorer back on defense. But there's a tie-up, and it'll be the South Ball. Towns another three. Yes, sir. He gets it going. Look at the wrist. Great rotation of the basketball. You know, he was one for eight going in the last two shots going down. They weren't bad shots, and they were right on the rim. It was like, it's not like he's been airballing the basketball. One, 15-footer Bernard. Short. Worley. Good read. Missed the layup. Out of bounds. The South Basketball. Dimitri Damani will come in. Bernard Blunt will go out. And suddenly it's a one-point game again. We'll see Everett Catlin for Jasper Van Teesling. Van Teesling with three fouls. Good crowd. We'll south student section to our left. Up on their feet and chanting. Little six point LaSalle run to get back with it one on a pair of Towns threes. Here comes Towns off the screen. Fakes pass, penetration, 10 footer, short. Towns in the rebound. And Towns is, forces the walk on Reggie Townsend. Reggie just taps his chest and Griff's saying he hit him on the arm. That's called a one man press. Eight turnovers, St. Joe, six for LaSalle. That was a bad move by Reggie Towns. Got to hold the ball to the guard for back. Oh, ugly pass there. Paul Berg hit Haywood in the ankles. See, Paul's trying to create something where he can just take his time. Stripped from behind by Towns is 
Townsend really bails him out. Mass. Gives it back to Bay. Pharrell Myers at the scorer's table. Mass from the corner. What makes a guy so great from one spot on the floor? Well, he just loves it, and I'm sure he practices a lot from the corner, but either side, when he gets to the corner, Bass is ready to receive the basketball, and he's ready to explode quickly. It doesn't take a long time to get off. No, it does not. Those three points, oh, my man. <laughs> That's, yeah, Bass wasn't even close to that one. He'll stay here, though. I don't know if we have a replay of that, but that is far when he's shooting the basketball, and it doesn't look hard for him to reach the basket from there. Okay, that's now an that's NBA three. Well, past NBA. And I mean, that's good rotation basketball right on front of the rim. Pass goes out, Myers comes in. That's now three on Carlin Worley. First on the Hawks in the second half. Burke for three, he is in. By Rasheed Bay. That would have been a four-point play if that goes down, possibly. That looked good all the way. Just came up a tiny bit short. See, the South scores are never out of it when you have Burke and Townsend who can fire from the three-point range. And John Griffin knows that. That's why he's playing predominantly man-to-man -man defense, trying to take the threes away from them. But maybe the time to put a little bit more zone when he showed them before and see if they can get it going. Because Townsend Burke get hot. Maybe you zone them and you match up out of the zone defense knowing where they are at the time. Burke off iron. Blunt in. Damani out. So it's a brief appearance for Dimitri. Paul Burke shoots at a 74.6 clip. The team only comes in at 67%. The Hawks 68. Not good free throw shooting team. Olaf Landgren in. Romain Haywood will sit. Landgren got four points. I'm sorry, four minutes and a pair of fouls in the first half. So it's two out of three for Paul Burke and a two-point basketball game. Inside 12 minutes remaining. At the Civic Center, Larry Rosen with Ed Stefanski. LaSalle goes 3-2 zone. Townsend high. Worley on the post. There's Townsend high. Looks for the high low, instead gives to Myers. Myers leaves his feet. Well, St. Joe did what John Griffin liked to have, is the ball got in the middle of the zone. Townsend turned, they fanned out the offensive players, but LaSalle did also, so good defense by the Explorers. Still low on the turnover numbers. Man to man, Burks got a ball screen from Catlin, works away from him. Now will give it to Towns. Towns. Waits for Blunt to go by, Bernard blocked it. And Worley is fouled by Mike Gizzi. That's good defense, Bernard Blunt from behind, and not use the body. Towns goes baseline, doesn't foul, does Blunt, but the perfect on the basketball. And Towns like that, that back, he think he can get off a better shot right there. Team foul number six on the Sal. Personal on Gizzi, 15 for Towns in his money. Talk about Reggie hiking that 14 foot jumper, moved it out to 16 and banged it home. His best look from there tonight. Cross court to the coach. I tell you what, I don't know how many Paul times Paul Burke has made those passes. Really cross court to really no one. Lack of concentration with the basketball. Quickly blunt. Good trap right there. They can get it. Landon stepped away from it. Blunt hit the side of the board. The South basketball. The word from Griffin was show some poise. We're in a zone now, the Hawks. The South did not attack it well a few times when St. Joe showed it. Let's see what happens here. That's a bad shot. Quick. One, two. That's not a good shot, but a quick one to get off. But he makes it. Langren averaging four points a game gets a three. And it's all he hits are threes. By far more three-point shots than two-point shots this year for the 6'9 freshman. One-point ball game. Worley, step away. Harlan, short. Kirk loses the handle. Myers comes out with it. Stripped by Kizzy. Cross-court, Landgren, same spot. 
exact same result the Sal leaves. Now that was a good shot. <laughs> Wide open in transition basketball. A good job that time by Paul Burke to hold the basketball. Wait till Landry gets set in the corner on transition. Wide open and the South fans up on their feet. Burke denying the high post so it's blunt that's open. Can't silence the crowd. Carlin Lorley! They're gonna wave it off. What a play! An excellent offensive rebound by Carlin Worley to use his body to keep the LaSalle Explorers on his feet, on their feet. Let's see what makes the jumper. Carlin Worley, 32 in red. Good positioning goes up. They got foul coming down. Yep. And the next level. He's going online shooting for a three-point play. John Griffin doesn't really complain that much. Catlin did get him coming down. That was still tremendous. That the was strength of this kid. kid. My goodness. Look at the guns on them. Oh, boy. My man's been lifting something. Uh-huh. Not just a fork. This is a foul shot. I remember you got on him about his weight once on the air. I feared for your life. Well, I wanted him to be a better player. <laughs> I right. talked to him. He, you know, he talked to me about it. Said, I yes, made him a better basket, that's right. When he was heavy, he couldn't rebound. I made him a rebounder. <laughs> <laughs> he's smiling. You know, he's a terrific kid, too. That's what I love about this kid. Carl Worley goes out and plays hard every game. And already has his degree. He's in grad school as a fifth-year senior. Johnson in, Worley out at the 930 mark. Speedy surveys the scene. And we're tied right there. That's a pretty good contest right here. Uh -huh. Both teams going at him real hard. The paint wide open as you see. Towns over Bass. Rims out. Bernard Blunt, good, strong rebound. The South stays zoned. High post Townsend. The collapse and kick. Bay will swing it. 14 footer stripped and fouled. On the way up, they're going to call that on Kareem, who can't believe it. Bay goes in. Green definitely gets him on the arm. It's a good call by the official. The ball went in the middle. Reggie Townsend has to kick it into the corner quickly because Bass is wide open in his favorite spot in the corner. He's taking a little too long, and the defense is adjusting. So uh, Kareem kind of hurts his credibility as he argues on that call. Worley back, Townsend out. And serious minutes and a great contribution for Sheen Bay now with eight points. And they're going to need serious minutes from Sheen Bay because he's really the only true point guard in the St. Joe program. Bass is asked to do it, but it's difficult sometimes. Burke goes right by the tip. Catlin climbs the back. Well, in that possession right there, Rasheed Begg did a good job of the offensive end, but he must stop the dribble. When you're playing at the top of the zone like that, you can't let Burke go by. He's too quick with his feet to let that happen. He's got to stop and make Burke pick up the dribble. Catlin sits. Van Teesling in. Uh, the foul advantage. Nine fouls LaSalle, two on St. Joseph's. Wow, huge. St. Joe can be aggressive defensively and not put LaSalle on the line. And if they hit their free throws, they're in good shape. And the 8.54 mark, leading by three. The gentleman behind John Griffin, the assistants, better remember that. They better tell John that they only have two. I'm sure he looks up, but they still have to remind him. And they go man to man. Griffin calls it out. And Kareem Towns has Mark Bass. Land with us at two big threes. Here's Towns. Takes it to Vance. Those glass. Under control with the dribble. And wow, good explosion there to use the glass. But he shows he can go outside and he can handle the ball inside. You gotta have some help. If you're Mark Bass, you're looking for it on the defensive end. One. Bass around Landry. 15 footer. He's on the floor. Push foul, Van Teesling, number four. Mark does a good job of creating contact after releasing yeah, the basketball. You know, you know he's 5'9", and these big guys are just, their momentum is carrying in there because, again, the shot was off, 
target, but they're going to put Bass and go to the line for two. So if you're a LaSalle Explorers, you play well defensively, but then you knock the guy down after he shoots a foul. Gizzy leaves as Newton returns. Van Tiesling will stay on the floor with his four personal fouls. Johnson out, Townsend in. This is a nice little three big guy rotation between Johnson, Townsend, and Worley. We'll get Romain Haywood back too after the first pass foul shot. And it's a lot easier for Mark Bass to play in this lineup with Rashid Bay taking all the ball handling duties. He can run in the transition. He knows where he likes to get to in a spot. So it's a tough year for this young fellow, Mark Bass, to go in there and try to change to a different position. Has done a nice job. 13 points on the evening. Here now some zone trap, 2-2-1. Two, two, we'll see how aggressive they are without the fouls. Burke goes over the top to Haywood, just off the bench and on the glass. And a big look that time by Paul Burke to throw over the defense of the Hawks. Remain Haywood get his fifth point. Terrific basketball game. Two point, Hawk lead with the basketball. High post Townsend, low is Worley. Worley comes all the way out to the corners, they overload. Reverse it to Beck. Blunt with seven on the shot clock. Townsend. Shot clock's at one. And they're going to call a travel on Bay first. And we'll get a break in the action. Tonight, it's a two-point basketball game and what's shaping up as a big five classic, St. Joe 61, the South 59 at the Civic Center. Remember that shot by John Smith that kind of ended well, Ray Meyer's career. Two local kids are probably watching tonight. John Smith from St. John Newman scores the bucket and Lonnie McFarlane from Roman Catholic. That may have coached him right there from Roman Catholic. Makes the nice pass in the two points. Lonnie was a shooter, but he'll always be remembered for a pass against DePaul. Biggest assist of his life. <laughs> and here come the Explorers. Cross court Towns takes it. Dribble penetration, laying off to the cutting Newton. Left hand, yeah, for time. He said before the game, someone has to help the guards for the sale. Well, Derek Newton, the 6'6 sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland, has stepped up a dozen points. <laughs> High low, Townsend goes low, Worley over the top, great pass by Townsend. And they have the mismatch in there, if you get the ball inside, Worley can put the 6-7 body on the guard, Burke, and he's got it, he just needs a nice lob pass, the nice touch pass by Reggie Townsend. Now they spread the floor against the man to man, Burke with Bay. The motion comes, Landry. Has Worley out on the floor. Posted is Newton. Newton takes it to Townsend. Battle of lefties. Haywood. Shot clock's at five. So Burke gives it to Town. Has the fire. Short. Rebound by Shubay. Good man to man defense by the Hawks that trip. High low once more. Townsend. Triple team. Kicks it back to Bay. We're going to take the ball right now, quickly. Can't steal by Towns, fouled by Townsend, and that obviously prevented a layup. Townsend was kind of thinking instead of protecting. And Townsend said, it's my fault, my fault. Right here, there's a good trap there. Towns, remember, very quick hands, Towns shows. But he's got to make that pass to Bernard Blunt quickly. The jump pass would work there. He's trapped, double team, jump pass. Only the third team foul. Landry, conscience misses. He's catching fire. Now two for three in the second half on three-point bombs. Bay crosses Towns too quick for that. Blunt. Townsend. Actually he has Worley. This foul from the high. We're going to call it on Landry in front. 
Speedy's trying all these zone defenses, but right now, St. Joe doing a good job. Again, they're getting the ball in the middle of the zone with Reggie Townsend, and he is making things happen either by the shot or the pass. St. Joseph's has shot so well from the free throw line the last couple of nights, 17 for 18 tonight. They were nearly led or perfect against Pennsylvania. They were perfect until overtime, shot 24 for 29. Got it. Johnson in. Kind of an offense-defense substitution between Johnson and Townsend. Worley hits. Four-point lead. Worley six for six from the line. Burke sees man-to-man -man coverage. Newton pops out as Towns comes around and accepts. Towns will back down fast. Stick away three. No off the rim. And Haywood is fouled as he goes for the rebound. He's got the dark run. A lot of credit to Romain Haywood and Derek Newton on the offensive glass this evening. Hawks come into the game and they beat people on the boards right there. Towns is shot. Romain Haywood slashes to the basket, gets in between Bond and Worley, and Bond pushes off. Team foul number four, Burke off the out-of-bounds. Long, Worley saw it, Worley kicked it, Blunt is one-on-one -on -one with Haywood. Blocked by Haywood, but a first back call on Derek Newton. As that was the explosive Bernard Blunt taking it right to the hole. That's what Bernard Blunt can do on the fast break. He can get in between you. He's so strong at six foot three. He just bullies his way inside. Derek Newton and Haywood way inside the lane. They got to try to pick that dribble up by the foul. Finally, this free throw. As noted, four on Newton, four on Van Teesling, three on Catlin, three on Landry. The sound needs a little help on this end. The tap is on the arm of Reggie Townsend. Langridge got Warley out on the floor. Burke had a double screen. Can fire from there. Paul Burke. Excellent set play. Speedy calls it out, and it's a set play for Paul Burke. A double screen down low. Towns being one of the screeners. And Paul Burke catches and fires. Now they go 3 2 on the zone. It's Bass ranging the baseline, accepts in the corner. He comes back near side as they swing at the bay. Now Bass in this corner for three. Short, Johnson. Johnson! Will Johnson hasn't gotten a lot of minutes, but he gets two points. His first two points in the evening, big points. Puts the Hawks up by four. And they go zone on the defensive end as the wheels are turning. Speedy Morris calls a timeout at the 4-11 mark. His club's down by four. He's working over the officials. We'll come back to the Civic Center in a moment. Lee Butler and White State and Xavier. These are good Midwestern clubs, but no one in Philadelphia knows it. And they get for 1,300 for those conference games. It's tough to get rivalries when people are 2,000 miles away from you. And uh, as we see, the Minute for Sal announced today, we'll leave the MCC at the end of the season. The new affiliation was not announced. They're out there. Who are they going to go to is the king. They're hoping that the Atlantic 10 goes to 12 teams. Should they go to two six-division clubs, the Sal might be one of those teams, Virginia Tech. It is also on the board for the Atlantic 10. Speedy needs a league that doesn't have incredible amounts of travel or there's some natural rivalries. They could go back to the back and maybe even the Colonial Conference. Meanwhile, to the business at hand. Four-point ball game. Any three of those conferences will help Speedy recruiting, but the kids want to stay in this area and play teams. He tried to recruit out of the Midwest zone. Got Brian Flickinger, a guard out of Indiana, for some of those... Midwestern rivalries, but those rivalries will end before they really get going. Double low stack. Newton pops out. Towns with Bass. In the traffic. Hesitation. They're going to call a block foul on Mark Bass, who is riding along the hip of Kareem Towns. Three on Bass. 
when your offense does not execute, it's good to have a one-on-one -on -one man to turn it over to like that. Well, in Kareem Townsend, they have two one-on-one -on -one men because Paul Burke does a great job breaking people down in a one-on-one situation, and the Speedy does a good job getting him in a situation where he can do that. Around and out for Towns. Got to make the free throws. Down four of the scores at home. Under four. Two, two, three. Three point ball game. Pass. Left side. Good energy level for the Hawks tonight. Morley steps up. Got a team to Townsend for a layup. Stats on the rebound, but John Griffin almost died over there. He gets his 16th point. Big bucket here. They must say, needs a good look at the basket. If they miss, they got to think about that zone defense. Soon they're going to think about going man to man. 25 footer burn. That will keep him in his own defense. And I mean, from distance, Paul Burke, 23 points on the evening. And he has hit the big shots to keep his club in touch. He led the MCC in assists last year, and he can shoot the best one. Look at the hands. Great steal, backing away with one hand. Towns. Too hard for Newton. Taken by, oh my, Blunt smashed it off the face of Van Teasley. And a technical foul will be called on Bernard Blunt. I can't believe that. He spiked it off the face of Van Teasley, but certainly no rancor was made. That's a very difficult call right there as he's trying to save the basketball. The referee has to make the decision that there was an intentional foul to throw the ball in his face, but he called it technical. He's not going to take it back. Also, John Griffin was on the court out of the box. The South coaches were trying to get a technical foul there also. Well, let's look at it. First, the pass was too hard for Newton to handle. It was taken by Plunt as he fell out, and it goes right off the face. It does actually hit Bernard, so it should have actually been the South basketball, but boom! And an unsportsmanlike technical, Jasper Mantis on the bench. I don't know, but I'm sorry, that's all off Landman on the bench. I don't know about that. In a two-point game, yeah, three minutes left. Well, you know, you hate to see the kid get hurt like that, but obviously, I don't think you, you try to get any piece of the body so it can go out of bounds. Burke misses a foul shot. And Burke leaves the line early there. He's got to stay on the line to make the shot. LaSalle will get the basketball back. One out of two. And that is a personal foul on Bernard Blunt also. He has three. Landgren will go to the bench. We got a little bit of everything in this contest. And he may very well have a uh, broken proboscis. Last thing on his mind. Burke. Bounce pass Newton. Towns. Baseline route. 12 footer Kareem. Long gets a roll out. Rebound Haywood. He'll go to the foul line. The explorers are staying on the glass. Coming in tonight, Speedy Mart said, we must rebound the basketball. He respected the Hawks inside, how they out-rebound their opponents. And right here, he gets pushed off the ball, but he comes right in. Second effort by Romaine Haywood. Two minutes, 43 seconds remaining in a one-point basketball game. Olaf being worked on by the trainer and the physician to our left. First of all, to check the cobwebs, and he says he's okay. Off the glass, it's been predominantly in sports. And it's normally the other way around when you play the Hawks. The Sal by a point. St. Joe has to handle the basketball out front. Kareem Towns has been getting his hand in outside. They've got to fake the basketball and make Towns commit himself. Blunt for three, rims out, the whistle, and a floor foul call. Carlin Worley will go back to the foul line in words between Newton? Bernard Blunt and Curry Towns. Is that Newton? That could be five. 
That is the limit for Derek Newton. And he's been a tower of strength. Bass takes a long jumper, blunt, and that's on rebounder. The leading rebounder in St. Joe history from the guard position gets inside, and I still haven't seen the foul. The foul was before. On Carlin Worley? Yeah. Okay. He had him hooked with the left hand a little bit, trying to hold Carlin Worley down from getting the offensive rebound. And now Speedy's got 30 seconds before he puts Everett Catlin in. Good ball game, Derek Newton. Goes in points. And the passions have been flamed over the last few minutes. Well, yes, indeed, Catlin comes in. Warley on the free throw line with 16 points. His club down one. There's Everett. Out of Hyattsville, Maryland. Harlan Warley, 64%. Big free throws. It's tied. Now, Larry, he has to shoot the ball well from the charity strip because when he is inside and they put the ball down, he plays that blue power game. He's going to go to the line a lot. He's got twice as many chances as anybody else on the club. It's a pair of big ones here. In his final City Series performance, Carlin has risen to the occasion. Eight for eight from the line with 17 points. Make it 18 points. Van Teeslick. Towns. One on one, Mark Bass, a tough assignment. Towns left, over Blunt, missed it. Townsend rebounds. Bass. Sends it back out to Rasheed Bay, getting all the minutes of the point guard here in the second half. St. Joe wants to run that 35 second clock, try to spread the South defense out. You got Rachel Townsend in the middle, that's where you should get the basketball. Bass in the corner. That same high low look with Townsend and Worley. Bass, good ball fake, 15 foot, a rainbow long block, and he would fight. No, keep it here. And a new 35 second clock. We have a buck 30 left in the game. Blunt looking for help. Finally brings it out. And gets it back for three. Bernard. Sizzler. Bernard Blunt. Huge bucket. It puts them on a four-point advantage for LaSalle. Now they need two possessions to score on two. Ball screen. Worley pops out. Good acting job. No call. Blunt fouls Van Teesling. And that will be over the limit at last for St. Joseph. So Jasper will go to the line. Kareem Towns with Speedy Bar is suffering through a four for 19 night from the floor. But if the game comes down to one shot, the odds still favor Kareem will be putting it up. Van Teasling going to the line at a 56% from the three throw line. I think they had this kind of pressure in the Netherlands. <laughs> He only gets to the line. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Also, they're not in the penalty situation. <laughs> the old-fashioned one-on-one. Perfect. Nice rotation. Good extension of the arm. Now the bucket goes in. It'll be a two-point hawk advantage. Speedy staying at one three one, or does he have to go man-to-man uh, -man soon? He's going to have to open up. Gets the roll, and they do not put pressure on here. They'll go back into half court. They're going to go in a 2-3, 3-2. 3 Got to find Bass in the corner. Townsend in the high post. Worley at the low. Bay with the basketball. There's a miss. The all five the South players have to get on the boards. High post Townsend. Van Teasley comes out and greets him. Steps away. Throws it away. Blunt finds it. Blunt penetration. Blunt to the air. And a foul. With 45 seconds remaining. When he goes, he penetrates through three people. Kaplan not there in time, and he gets the nice roll here. At the convention center, he gets Civic Center, excuse me, he gets the roll. And he's happy because he's trying to vindicate himself on that technical foul. And look at the Hawks respond. Townsend out, Johnson in. Blunt has 14 points. 
Back-to-back -back superb outings from Bernard Blunt. This is a four-point ball game. Plenty of time. They can get a deuce. They don't have to get the three. Burke gives it down to Catlin. Here comes Towns around. Towns for three. No. Rebound off the hands of Blunt. Saved by Blunt. No trap comes. Blunt dribbles away from it. Is fouled by Haywood with 26.9. Well, Bernard Blunt has come up strong for the technical foul, throwing the ball intentionally when the referee said in the face of Landry, he's come back with two big buckets, a three and a two, and they're a very strong rebound, and with 26.9 seconds up four, he makes two here, but Sal's going to have to launch the three and then try to get a steal. Bernard has filled up the stat line, he's got five boards, 14 points. We're talking defense. John Griffin says man to man coming out, regardless of the make or the miss. Misses. Right now, the inside players of St. Joe, John Griffin's decided to leave them in there. They have to watch themselves not go over the top, put some pressure on there, but not foul. Makes it five point advantage. Now you need a three. Burke crosses over, gets a screen, squares up and fires off the heel, runs it down, but Blunt's got the basketball. Blunt ahead of the pack to Bay. Bay is hammered from behind by Haywood, hits the basket support. St. Joe's went to the text where they won't get it. Yeah, I think they did get intentional. No, they did. It crossed the arms. It's an intentional. Romain went over and just dropped. Speedy's played a lot of good ball clubs, 35 minutes, but he wants to play good ball clubs 40 minutes and get a W. And tonight they had the Hawks on the ropes. They will sit. Myers will come in as we see the LaSalle bench. Gizzy comes in. Kaplan goes out, an extra shooter. LaSalle needs a five or an offensive foul. I think John Griffin's going to say, let's just set up the... Johnson will come in for Myers. They go a little bigger on defense. Griff wants some pressure the length of the floor. Good idea. Try to run the clock down. Don't let Burke just use the clock. Burke goes right around Bay and is pushed by Bay. And that's either a freshman mistake or an unusual foul call. That's a freshman mistake. <laughs> yeah. One thing if you're a Hawk, you do not want the clock to stop. Eight seconds with Sal down six. Still. A miracle needed by the Explorers. It's still one and one for Paul Burke. Johnson sits, Townsend returns. John Griffin three and one, three and one against his friend and teacher Speedy Morris. He'll go four and one next play. Burke, twenty six points. A season high coming in, so that's a new season high for Burke. And a foul called Mark Banks. 
And that'll be two free throws as it's 10. And there you go, the two free throws takes it down to three, one possession. If LaSalle can get a steal, they can tie the game, pick up an offensive foul. So he's got to make, he gets two shots. So he's got to make at least one of them. Two of them, he's got to make yep. two. Gizzi is yet to score. Mark Bass will go out, Damani will come in. There's one. This is the big one. Set up the full court pressure, try to get an offensive foul or a quick steal. Seven seconds. There's two. More than inbound. Length of the floor to Blunt. Blunt. Foul from behind. Intentional foul is Blunt. On his face. Burke pulls up. No, and this one's over. So John Cricket goes to four and one against his friend and mentor, Speedy Mars. And the final score, St. Joseph's 83, LaSalle 76. We'll come back and wrap this one up for the Civic Center in just a moment. stretch to take this one away from Speedy Morris' club. And now our play of the game brought to you by your Cadillac Super Network dealer. As you might expect, it was that driving layup from Bernard Blunt. A big bucket because the 35 second clock was going down and he drives between two players and he muscles it in and gets the roll. Pound almost gets it because of that pass, but the turnover is not there and it's a bucket and a hawk victory. We talked at the very beginning that it was the uh, final Big Five City Series performance for those two men embracing beneath the basket, Bernard Blunt and Carlin Worley, and they certainly came up big tonight. Bernard made the big plays down the stretch. Carlin Worley, of course, a tower on the rebounding side, and a 10 for 10 from the free throw line. St. Joseph's really executed very well when LaSalle came back and got him at the end of the ballgame. Well, the problem is LaSalle has to go in that zone the whole game. They don't have the depth nor do they have players to match up with St. Joseph. Speedy's trying to change up the zone defense. But when you see zone a whole game, you finally get it down the offensive end. They did. They got the ball in the Reggie Townsend, Colin Worley low. The inside factor for St. Joe just wore the inside players of LaSalle down. Well, if you like rivalries, we sure have a great one for you coming up in our next Prism College Basketball Telecast. The Princeton Tigers take